For an upcoming project, I need to 3D print some structural parts with a high emphasis on strength and stiffness, something stronger than your typical FDM materials. What I really need is the strength and stiffness of carbon fiber, but can it be possible to 3D print with these exotic materials? Safe build stuff. Well, sort of. You can 3D print with materials that are reinforced with little bits of chopped carbon fibers. It's not as strong or as stiff as a typical carbon composite construction that utilizes continuous fibers, but it should be significantly stronger than your typical FDM materials and perhaps strong enough for my project. There are a few carbon fiber reinforced nylon, PLA, ABS, and even PETG materials on the market. Those seem pretty good, but recently a couple of manufacturers released a carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate. Now we're talking. PC is one of the strongest and stiffest FDM materials available, particularly in the layer adhesion, which will be very important for structural parts. That is to say, if you can get it to print reliably, PC is also one of the most challenging materials to print with, usually requiring an exotic industrial level printer, but I need to be able to print it on my very consumer level Ender 6. I purchased a roll of Carbon X from 3DX Tech to try at 60 bucks per half kilogram. This stuff ain't cheap. I also purchased some hardened steel nozzles as the little bits of chopped carbon fibers in the material are abrasive and will wear out a brass nozzle. I got 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles to try. I read about people having clogging issues with a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which I can see happening. I mean, you get like a little little nozzle opening and the, you know, the fibers could plug that hole up. So I'll try the larger nozzles. Plus my parts that I'm planning to print will be larger, so having larger nozzles makes sense anyways. My Ender 6 and BQH2 direct drive extruder seem to handle the higher printing temps no problem. That's at 290C on the hot end and 120C on the bed. Except for my part cooling fan duct, but that's partially because it was contacting the heater block because my design's a little bit lame and I need to re redesign it anyways and I'm not gonna use a cooling fan on this material so it's gone for now. I started with a 20 millimeter calibration cube scaled up 200%, so a 40 millimeter calibration cube. The first layer seemed to stick fine to my PEI bed sheet once I got the Z offset dialed. But after 10 or so minutes, it was clear that one of the corners was warped and had started to lift off the bed. And then about a third of the way through the part, it released and failed. Clearly bed adhesion with this material to PEI is not good enough, but that's also not really a surprise as the manufacturer recommends an adhesive like Magigoo, so I ordered a tube. Despite the failed part, I was able to learn a few things. For one, my Ender 6 seems to be up to the task of handling printing this material, at least for smaller parts. This stuff does seem hella strong and lightweight, which should be perfect for my next project. It kind of has an interesting tangy sound when you tap on it, kind of like a carbon fiber part. The layer adhesion seems excellent, which is to be expected with polycarbonate. I did a quick separator test where I drove a flathead screwdriver in between the layers trying to get them to crack and separate and they did not. It acted rather isotropic like. I also tried sanding one of the faces just to see how that would go. First with 240 then 400 then 600 grit. It did indeed come out quite smooth. It didn't quite seem to sand quite as nicely as something like ABS. It acted maybe more a little bit like a PLA. So it's workable, not, not the best ever, but you can work it. As soon as the Amazon guy dropped off the package, I applied the Magic Goo to the cold bed plate as instructed. I'm using my damaged PEI sheet here 
just for the testing because I wanna save my good sheets for later, obviously. I let the adhesive dry, warmed up the printer, and ran the exact same G-code as the first try. I also covered my printer with a heavy furniture blanket, which helps to keep the heat in and keep it uh, insulated, which I've done in the past with great results. And about 45 minutes later, success. My first carbon fiber 3D printed part. Aside from the overhangs and saggy top layers, which uh, were to be expected with no part cooling fan and the very low infill percentage, this part printed quite nicely. Importantly, there are no signs of warping. So it seems I can definitely print this stuff. Next, I performed the standard extrusion multiplier calibrations. I ended up with a value of 0.78, which seems really low from what I understand uh, outside of the normal range. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. My E-step calibration and filament diameter are all set correctly and the correct nozzle spot size is specified in the slicer and in the clipper config. So not quite sure what's going on, but it seems to be working fine. So I'm just gonna roll with it. To further test for stability and warping, I next printed a 28 millimeter OD tube, 140 millimeters long, just two perimeters and they are 0.65 millimeters each, so about 1.3 millimeter wall thickness. I'm happy to say this printed perfectly. There's no signs of warping. You just see the seam line here where the layer stops and starts, and I, I, I assume it's spiraling because I, the slicer value, slicer setting was set to nearest. You could set it to aligned and then it would be a vertical line. Uh, this is round to within about two thousandths of an inch, which is what I would expect from uh, the accuracy of a printer like this. And it's consistent along the length of the tube. And this is about the size, at least the vertical size of the parts that I'll need for my next project. Uh, by the way, hit subscribe because you're going to want to check that out. This project is fun. It's going to be really cool. You'll like it. With this tube, I can sort of directly compare it with a similarly sized, traditionally manufactured tube. And you'll notice with this material, with the 3DX material, I can cause quite a bit of distortion by squeezing it here. Whereas with a traditional table rolled carbon fiber tube, there's no way I can make that. I mean, maybe a little bit. If I measured it with a micrometer, I could probably measure that distortion, but it's really not much. So both of them are about one millimeter wall thickness tubes. So clearly this material is not going to produce parts that are anywhere near as stiff or strong as a traditionally manufactured carbon fiber part. That shouldn't be a surprise because of the different manufacturing techniques. It's just a good reminder that just because a product has carbon fiber in the name doesn't going to mean it's going to have the same structural properties as a different manufacturing technique that uses the same materials. Next up was to try something a little more ambitious. This is a full scale test part with dimensions similar to what I will be needing. And it has very thick walls, a lot of material and a long print time. This uh, is a great stress test for not just the material, but also for my printer, making sure it can handle those higher temperatures for that amount of time. So I wasn't really sure how well it was gonna go, but there it is. It printed just fine in about three and a half hours. 
The only imperfections are the uh, seams, which are to be expected on a, a round cylinder part like this. Otherwise, no signs of warping. It's dimensionally accurate. There's some 45 degree overhangs on the inside, which seem to print just fine. And this thing is bomber. I mean, it feels really strong. It's basically all perimeters, so it's basically a solid. So I'm really pleased with how this came out. Thick wall part, rather large, long duration print time, printed just fine. Um, this is getting me really excited for being able to use it on my project. The final test I wanted to perform was an overhang test. I did not expect overhangs to print very well considering there's no part cooling fan, but I was actually a bit surprised about the performance. A little bit of distortion started to show up at 45 degrees and with only really major distortion showing up at the 30 degree overhangs. So this is definitely useful and it tells me for my part design I'll want to try to keep you know, outside overhangs to be somewhere to be, you know, 50 to 45 degrees max. And for the, you know, inside overhangs, well, I've got a Dremel tool. So there it is, 3D printed carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate. I'm super impressed with this material. It's super strong, has excellent chemical and thermal properties. And once you get your printer dialed, it seems to print quite nicely. I love this textured matte black finish. It definitely looks like carbon fiber and I can't wait to start printing with this stuff on my next project. But what have your guys' experience been like with printing advanced materials like this? Have you had experience with nozzles clogging or warping or maybe just other things that you wouldn't expect from your experiences printing with regular FDM materials? Let me know down in the comments. Be sure to subscribe because I can't wait to start sharing what my next project is going to be. I'm having a lot of fun with it so far and uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Thanks for checking it out.